Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Murphy Jr. and you are listening to the Fantasy Football Fix with Walton Sperlin of Pro Football Focus. Walton, how you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show again as we're at about just about the halfway point of the fantasy season and uh, things are really heating up, so excited to talk a little week seven fantasy action. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get right to it. Uh, we're right in the thick of bye weeks here, and uh, there's some pretty big, big names uh, that are on bye weeks. Uh, you know, you got Green Bay, which means Aaron Rodgers is, is on the bench. Um, Seattle, Pittsburgh, and I think the Raiders as well. So, as you look, I, I know a lot of people may only have one quarterback on their rosters, and then they just deal with bye week when it comes, and they go off the waiver wire. So, let, let's start with the. Uh, if you are in the situation where your quarterback is on a, a, a bye week, who's a good plug-in this week? That's a, that's a great question. And I, like you said, yeah, I think this week the quarterback position is the hardest hit by bye. But fortunately, there's some really good uh, matchups out there for guys that are likely on the waiver wire. First one I like probably the most is uh, Joe Flacco. He, he's uh, at home against the Saints. The Saints allow 313 passing yards per game. They've given up 11 touchdowns, only have two interceptions. So I know it's not a sexy name, but you've got Joe Flacco. Yeah, he's out there. The only concern there is they're talking maybe it might be a little bit windy during that game, so keep an eye on the weather report. But I like Joe Flacco. I really like Baker Mayfield. You know, and the rookie's had that kind of an up and down season, but he's got one of the most juicy matchups. He's at Tampa Bay. That Tampa Bay defense is really, really struggling. They're, they're allowing 366 passing yards per game. They've given up 16 touchdown passes and only have a single interception. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was uh, Mitchell Trubisky lit them up for for a ridiculous oh, amount yeah. of touchdowns. So Baker Mayfield could definitely have uh, some success there. Oh, absolutely. One last name or a couple. Of, if you're in the pinch, I know this name's going to rub some people the wrong way. Eli Manning has a great matchup against Atlanta. Oh, come on. Uh, uh, indoors, he's got OBJ. Atlanta has given up over 1,800 passing yards in six games, 16 touchdowns, a couple rushing touchdowns. I don't think Eli – I'm just saying, if you're in a pinch, depending on the size of your league, I know he's coming off one of his worst games. But, again, this is the best matchup he's going to have for the rest of the year. Yeah. And, again, also the Red, the Red Rifle, Andy Dalton, great matchup with Kansas City. Any quarterback in Kansas City, those are shootouts. Yeah, the, yeah, Kansas City, man, for, for as great as that offense is, that defense is really lacking. So that's going to be a uh, – that could be a very interesting game, probably very fun to watch on Sunday night with Kansas City and Cincinnati. You're, you're right, you're probably going to see a lot of points scored. Absolutely. Now, um, so go, no, go ahead. I was going to say, just on a real quick side note here, I know you're never going to bench Drew Brees. But just keep in mind, again, there could be a win factor at Baltimore, but he's never beaten Baltimore in his career. So maybe that may motivate him or that's a jinx. And also, Baltimore's been pretty tough on quarterbacks. They've only given up six touchdowns. Yeah. And so, but, but again, you're not going to bench free. You might just temper your expectations. See, that, that's a real tough call. I think maybe if you're in a situation where you've got Drew Brees and another pretty good quarterback, maybe you can start looking at those matchups like, if you're if if you got like Breeze and Mahomes on, on you know, or you got Breeze and right. Tom Brady or something, you know, but that'd be the only way. Yeah, yeah but you're even Brady's got a tough yeah. matchup in Chicago this weekend, so I don't even know if I would do that because yeah, exactly. it, yeah, benching Breeze is never something you want to do because but this is it it is a tough matchup and Baltimore's defense is is pretty lights out this season, so. That's going to be a tough call. Now, with these quarterbacks, they they got they got to throw to people. Um, the wide receiver position has been just crazy, up, like up and down this year. Where you got guys, they'll go for two hundred yards and two touchdowns one week, and then get like two catches, no touchdowns the next week. And there, there's there's a lot of those. You got a guy like Julio Jones who just famously can't find the end zone. Even though he's still getting targets, where where are you at with the? Um, who are some of your top plays for wide receivers th this week, as far as the superstars, and then also maybe some sleeper picks? Right. Well, yeah, I, 
again, I think, you know, the, the, the name that jumps right off the page, if we, if we talk about some guys are wildly inconsistent, well, let's just call Adam Thielen Mr. Consistent. Yeah. This guy's just, put, just putting up 100 yards a game. I mean, he's got four touchdowns. We'll take that. But, you know, obviously Thielen's always a must-start. Um, I, I worry about uh, Deshaun Watson this week, just health-wise. I know he's dealing with some ribs. And DeAndre Hopkins didn't practice yesterday. I have not seen if they haven't released the, the practice report for Houston yet today. But you know, it's hard to ever sit DeAndre Hopkins you know, unless he's out. So you yeah. know, you, you ride the, the big the big guns. You know, the, there's some uh, AJ Green got you know, a fantastic matchup. Again, we just touched on it uh, against the Chiefs. You know, so you know, he he's somebody there, and, and some sleeper guys that I really like that people may not be thinking about so much. Again, I mentioned that Baltimore and. Saints game. I like John Brown in Baltimore. He's really fit in there. He's become that deep threat. Yeah. Average the twenty yards, twenty yards of reception. You know, he he uh, he takes the lid off the defense. Michael Crabtree, especially in DPR after Baltimore the night he's averaging nine targets a game right now. He's coming off his best game of the season, uh, six catches, ninety three yards, and a touchdown last week. Uh, he, he's kind of a nice sleeper. And then let's flip it around on the other side of that for the Saints. Cameron Meredith, the, the former Bear, who suffered that horrible broken leg in the preseason last year, but he's really started to step up now. He's got nine catches, 114 yards, and a touchdown. There's no tight end junior. That brings me to Traquan Smith, who in the game before the bye, the first one where he stepped in, because Ginn hadn't been put on injured reserve, but he missed the game. The kid stepped in. Now, he's not going to do this every week. Three targets, three receptions, 111 yards, two touchdowns. You know, he's got four for 129 and those two touchdowns on the season, that's the deep threat for the Saints now. Now, it, it may not be this week, but he's somebody you, you, you want to grab onto. And, I, and unfortunately, against our Lions, I also love how the bike on that bike is. Dalton just started to use Albert Wilson. I love that signing. If you, you know, watched that Bears game last week. Yeah, he, yeah, he really exploded last week for sure. Yeah, yeah, he could make a five-yard pass, 75 yards just like that. I think he might even be the new... Surpassing our own Golden Tate, my favorite yard after catch guy, because he gets in his hands, man. He's like a running back. So you know, those are some, those are some kind of sleeper names I like. Along with you know, you gotta ride your studs, Tyreek Hill, you know, guys along those lines. Another sneaky good guy, Robert Woods. Yeah, radar, I, yeah. I was gonna say man. with the the Rams, you know, they got that potent passing attack. You know, you got Todd Todd Gurley, but the passing attack is is you know key for that team and. Uh, Cooper Cup, who's really come on this year, uh, looks like he's, he's he's out this week, and who knows how long. Yeah. And then uh, right. Brandon Cooks was still, uh, you know, suffering the effects of a concussion. I'm not sure if he's going to play this week or not, but um, whether he's in or out, I really like Robert Woods this week with with Cooper Cup being out. Oh yeah, like I said, I think he's a real good player. I said he's under the radar, a top ten uh, PPR wide receiver right now. So you know, definitely get him in your lineup. Now, um, where are you at with some uh, running backs? Um, you know, you got your top guys. You know, like I said, Todd Gurley, he's always going to uh, be there. Right. Melvin Gordon, do you think he's going to continue? Like, he's just lights out this year, you know, averaging 20, you know, 20 points a game, um, 20 points a, a, a week or so. Last week, it, you know, uh, he went for like 30. Is he going to keep up this pace? Can the Chargers keep th this this style of I, offense I, going? I think so. I, I really do. I think that you know, their, their offense is clicking. You know, it, it's nice to see them winning some of these close games early in the year because that's what really, I think, uh, sunk their season last year. They lost so many close games early and couldn't dig out of the hole. But yeah, because, I mean, Melvin Gordon is just showing it. And he can do it all. You know, he's averaged over five yards a carry. Six rushing touchdowns. Surprisingly, he's got 30 receptions. Yeah, you know, I, I think it was more as a kind of, you know, just, it, it, with the potential to break any running play, but they're using him in the, in the receiving game. 30 receptions, three receiving touchdowns. So he's a dual threat. They've got, uh, you know, all the weapons that it's hard. You can't just focus to try and stop him. you got Keenan Allen, Slingwall, Tyrell Williams, Mike Williams. So, you know, you can't just say, all right, we're just going to shut down Gordon because, you know, Philip Rivers will pick you apart. Yeah. So I, I, I look for him to keep the pace up. What other back, running backs are you high on right now? I'd say, you know, for, I mean, looking at this week in particular, I think mean, you got to love, again, touchdown, play your uh, offensive weapons against uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. I like Joe Mixon. No Giovanni Bernard this week. 
Kansas City right now is allowing an average of, this is total yards, rushing and receiving, which we know Mexico can do both. They, they use them in both facets of that. They allow 193 yards a game to running back. And they've given up six rushing touchdowns, three receiving touchdowns. So Joe Mixon's a really good start. And then you look, the news came out today, there's no Leonard Fournette and um, no Dalvin Cook. So, uh, you know, Latavius Murray had a really big uh, game last week. Yeah, he's going to get the bulk of the carries. T.J. Eldon will continue to be number one, you know, in, uh, in Jacksonville until Fournette gets back. Those are a couple guys. I like our own carry on Johnson a lot this week. I know we'll touch on some Lions, but I, I think he's in for a big game because I don't think Riddick's going to play. He didn't practice again today. So I think maybe that is an uptick in the passing game for Johnson. Hopefully, get him the ball more. And a sneaky good play, Peyton Barber. And he seems to finally have emerged as the number one back in Tampa Bay. And a nice uh, week six, 13 rushes, 82 yards, over six yards to carry. More importantly, four receptions, 24 yards and a touchdown. The Browns have allowed seven rushing touchdowns. So, yeah. sneaky good. You know, maybe get Peyton Barber in there depending, you know, uh, if you have James Conner, that's really about the best running back we're missing on the bye weeks. The rest of those, those teams have pretty much a yeah. rushing attack. Yeah, I uh, I have been waiting for Peyton Barber to like I watched him in college and he was you know he was good and I really thought he was going to come on strong this year I, I think this is second year um, maybe third I so. but yeah either way man I've been waiting for him um, I he's a guy that I've always had stashed on my bench but I'm just too nervous to play him because. He, He's never really had that breakout game. I think finally he had a good game last week, but I wouldn't even call that a breakout game yet. But I think he's due. You know, I've been waiting for him. So I agree with you there um, with Peyton Barber. Um, what what about Philly's situation? I know uh, Clement seems like he's re- like ready to – take over with uh, Ajayi being out for the year, but they, they're still doing the, they, you know, they got Smallwood it, it, as well. I, um, would you be okay to play either one of those guys, or do you think one's going to do you think Clement's going to finally, like, kind of take over that backfield? That, that's the thing. It's, it, I'm right in the I'm rowing the boat with you there. Uh, it'll be just like, uh, it's, I thought that they would just turn it over to Clement, but they, well, I think they actually even started Smallwood you know, uh, in that first week after Jai was out. So, to me, it's almost, I'm going to watch this week's game. I have Clement in the league. I started him. Uh, what, are they coming off of their bye? Are they, no, I no, I started him in that giant game. Um, I, I think this week, I'm, I think I have the opportunity to start uh James White, so I'm going that direction. But, and I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach. I think we need another week to see. I know Sproles is already out. They said it's a week to week for him. So I, I want one more week to see what Peterson's going to do with, with the running back before I trust it. Yeah. Now, um, one last running back I want to talk about who's frustrating me and probably a lot of people who took him very, very high in their draft is uh, David Johnson out of Arizona. Um they played last night. They got murdered by Denver, who is not that great. And they just, you have a guy who you people thought was going to come back off this injury and just, and just really light things up. And that offense is just so bad that he, he doesn't even have a chance. So now, at, at some point, you're going to have to either bench him or try to trade him to somebody who thinks maybe they'll be an upside because... Right now, you can't even start your your first draft pick. So, what do you do in a situation where you got a guy like David Johnson specifically, or you know somebody else who who you're high on, but they're they're not producing for you, and so now you're not sure what to do. Well, here's where I'm at with Johnson, and of course, the news just came out today. They fired Mike McCoy as offensive coordinator. Yeah. They promoted by, they promoted Byron Leftwich. Uh, offensive coordinator. I'm going to give it next week. And to me, it, it seems pretty simple with David Johnson. They're just using him. They're just plowing you into, you know, they're using like a between the tackles only type of running back on early down. And this guy can catch the ball. He can, he can, he can run stretch plays. And for some reason, McCoy was just using him like a, a Jerome Bennett. And it's like, no, get this guy out in space. That's, that's where he excels. So I'm going to give it next week. 
with Watchwitch to see if they do make any kind of changes to, to the way the, the, the scheme that they're using it in. And then, and then if, if you fall flat, I started him this week. You know, I'm, I'm sitting on that bad performance already, but I'm giving them that one last week, and that's it. And if it, if it looks into that, they, they have the 49ers. So, so that's a matchup where you could shine. Yeah. You know, and well, you know what? I, I may have to go back and say, then they have the bye week, and then they have Kansas City. So we'll see how we look next week against the Chiefs. Yeah, I'm thinking even if I'm still mad at them. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I want to see, I want to see how they use them before I, I completely cut bait. You know, and again, it depends on what other options you have you know, on your uh, on your bench. But so I'm gonna wait and see if the offense how it looks under Leftwich next week, and then obviously they'll have the bye week to continue to work on it. So yeah. there's somebody who's gonna get fired after that game last night. Yeah. Fire that whole team right now, man. But, all right, um, let's wrap it up with some Lions talk. Um, got Matt Stafford. I th- I think is in a pretty good p- position here. The the Dolphins, kind of a mediocre football team right now. They you know they've won some games, uh, but they've lost some games pretty badly. They're going against uh, Brock Osweiler who can be an interception machine, so there could be a lot of opportunity for Stafford to have some good field position. Um, he could have a really, really good game this week. I'm, I'm on board with you there. I agree. In the last three weeks, the, the Dolphins have allowed seven touchdown passes, only have four interceptions. He just the last week. Trubisky put up three touchdowns, one interception against them. Stafford's got a full complement of weapons. You know, I, I like all three of our wide receivers. You know, obviously, to me, we don't really have a tight end we're talking about for fantasy purposes. No. So, and again, I'm hoping for, you know, carry on Johnson to, to see an uptick in stats, especially with Theo Riddick out. I, I hope they don't try to, like, use Abdullah in Riddick's role. No, 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 just use carry on Johnson more. Yeah, that's what I'm really waiting for, too. Let's, uh, let's cut it out with the... LeGarrette Blunt and Carry on Johnson splitting the backfield. You know, I think LeGarrette Blunt should be a goal line back, uh, you know, third and short, uh-huh. things like that. And let's carry, let's have Carry on be our, you know, basically every down back, you know, um, except for those real short yard situations where LeGarrette Blunt really shines. Um, I, I would love, I really love, to, would love to see Carry on get twenty to twenty five touches. Because um, he can catch the ball out of the backfield too, and um, I think we need to oh, yeah. see that more. And, and hopefully, we see that this week. Um, and now, you said you, you like all three wide re- receivers. Would you not have an issue pl- playing any one of uh, Galladay, Tate, or Jones? And what if you had all three on your team? How many would you play? And which ones? Well, I would have to, uh, if I had to go in order, I'd say I would probably go, I would want Tate Galladay, if I, if I had to. And again, if I had all three of my team, it would depend on what other options I had. I, I just think, I think Marvin Jones has been a little inconsistent lately. I yeah. mean, those, 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 uh, those contested catches that you used to count on, I haven't been, he hasn't been bringing them down. I, I thought that the one, Touchdown pass in the end zone, yeah, it was at least stretched out for it. That he dropped it, that he stretched out for it, but I didn't see any reason why it seemed like last year Marvin Jones was bringing that in. And so, and I just like what Gallows they bring in, in the red zone. Like I said, we don't have a tight end to speak of, per se, you know, the, in the red zone, you know, that, that creates a mismatch. I think Gallaudet does with his size and his athleticism. And I think, especially, that, you know, if you look, last week Miami was kind of vulnerable to the passes to Tariq Cohen. And some passes to, uh, you know, I think Allen Robinson finally finally got off of it. Uh, Taylor Gabriel, I, you know, so kind of a, a slot type guy. So I think that's where uh, Golden State can, can make some hay against the Dolphins. So yeah, if I had to, if I had to go in order, I'd say Hay, Galladay, and, and if I had to sit any of them, it would probably be Marvin Jones. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. Well, all right, Walton, I'm gonna let you go here, but I'd like to thank you for joining us on the. Fantasy Football Fix, and uh, good luck to you this weekend, and we'll talk again next week. All right. Good luck, everybody. Fantasy teams, and read my stuff at Pro Football Focus. All right.
And you have been listening to the Fantasy Football Fix brought to you by the Detroit Sports Sit-Down and Michigan Sports and Entertainment.com. My name is Tom Murphy, Jr., and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.